Hi everyone, my name is Kendall Sturgeon and I work at the SIMS Graduate Library. This is the first in a series of tutorials designed to introduce you to some of the databases we think will be useful to you in your academic and professional work. In these videos, I'll give you a brief introduction to the databases, instructions on where to find them, and tips on how to search effectively. The two databases we're looking at today are Library and Information Science Abstracts, or LISA for short, and Library Literature and Information Science Full Text, sometimes called Library Lit. Both databases cover a range of topics that are of interest to our community, such as technology, archiving, management, copyright, censorship, all kinds of good stuff. And both have about the same audience, library students, library staff, and other information professionals. The main difference between the two databases is whether they claim to provide full text. Library and Information Science Abstracts is an abstract database, so that means it provides records with all the information about the article, title, author, subject, and its abstract, but it expects you to go out and find the full text. And Library Literature and Information Science Full Text usually has the full text, but the rest of the record might be severely lacking. So things such as an abstract, subject terms, they're not included. And that could impact your searching. But of course, and especially lately, there are so many exceptions to this rule that it's almost meaningless. Sometimes Lisa does have full text and Library Lit doesn't. So my advice is to check both. One thing I want to stress at this point is that at the graduate level and as future library information professionals, you should not let the lack of full text stop you from checking out that article if it's super relevant. Interlibrary loan is getting really good. It'll probably send you a copy the very next day. And even if it's, it's not available through ILL, if you run up against a paywall, please do not pay for articles. Check with us at the library. We'll exhaust our methods and try and track it down for you. So that's a brief overview of the databases. Now I'll show you where to find them. The way databases work at Western is there are some databases available to everyone in the whole school, and then some databases are only available to a specific faculty or group, probably to keep costs down. So for the two databases we're looking at today, Library Lit is accessible through Western Libraries and is accessible to everyone in the school, whereas LISA is only available through the SIMS password protected intranet. So I'm going to show you that. I'll open up a browser and for library lit we'll go to lib.uwo.ca, hover over research tools and click databases, click L and then it's right here, library and information science full text. Great. And while we're here I'll just direct your attention to this database here. So Lisa and library lit are probably the two most influential LIS databases but coming in at a, as a close third would be LISA, Library Information Science and Technology Abstracts. We're not going to take a look at it today, but keep it in mind for when you're doing your research. Okay, so this is Library Lit. Now we'll get to LISA by going to the FIMS Graduate Library website, which is at lib.fims.uwo.ca. Hover over Resources and click FIMS Databases. Now at this point, you're trying to access something in the intranet, so it's going to ask you to put in your FIMS username and password. Scroll down about halfway down the page, and it's right here, Lisa via ProQuest. Now you might recognize the look of these two pages from your undergrad days, and that's because these databases use platforms or vendors that you've probably used before. So Lisa uses ProQuest, and Library Lit uses EBSCOhost. And just to make it abundantly clear what I mean by platform, I'll show you this structure. So when we think about it, or when we're usually doing our searching, we're usually focused on the articles. And it doesn't matter where they came from as long as they help us write our papers. But of course, when we think about it, we know that articles are compiled into journals and journals are compiled into databases. And databases in turn are sort of compiled by vendors and made accessible through a platform like ProQuest. So again, a platform is a collection of databases. Databases are a collection of journals and journals are a collection of articles. I know this sounds obvious, but as you go through the MLIS program, 
it wouldn't hurt to start thinking more explicitly about these things because the more you understand how things are structured, the easier it will be to troubleshoot problems down the road. Okay, back to the databases. You'll notice both Lisa and Library Lit has this option to change databases or choose databases. So I'm just going to click into Lisa's for a second and you'll see a list of all of the ProQuest databases to which Western has purchased access. So ProQuest has many more databases than this, but they only let you see the ones you have access to. This page is a good thing to know about because you can usually find out through the view title list which journals are indexed in a given database and how many. This page is also handy because depending on your research topic, you may be able to expand your search results by adding a related subject database to your search. One that I commonly use is ERIC, and that is an educational resource database. And that's because there are sometimes overlaps between library and information science and education research. But for now, I'm just going to search library and information science abstracts. So back to the main page, which you can see defaults to basic search. So I'm just gonna enter in the, a search term and see what happens. So I'm interested in library classification. Okay, so you see we get way too many results, over 25,000. And that's because ProQuest will bring back any article that has the word library and has the word classification in it, no matter how unrelated to each other those words are. So for example, it could turn up an article about job classifications in a library environment, which is not something we're interested in. So if you only want to get articles about the concept of library classification, like Dewey Decimal, Library of Congress, et cetera, then you can, one way to improve the search is by putting your term inside quotation marks. Great, so now we're down to 741 results. We can refine these results even further using the facets on the left-hand side of the screen. So if we only want peer-reviewed articles, we can check the box. If we're only interested in research from the last decade or so, we can use the date slider to choose a date range. If we want to specify which document type, we can choose article, feature, or if we want to eliminate one of those from our results, we can click more and under exclude, check the box beside the document type you don't want to see. So when I click apply, these nine results of book reviews will be eliminated from the results. If you're noticing, which sometimes happens, that a lot of the articles are in languages that you do not speak or read, you can refine uh, by language as well. So if you only speak English, you can click English. If, you're, uh, if you speak more than one language, you can click more. And under the include column, check the box beside the languages that you do read. Okay, 215 results, not bad. So basic search is an excellent option when you're just starting out with your research topic. Once you read or skim through a few articles, your understanding of the topic will grow and you'll find more keywords to add to your search and narrow in on a specific research question. And then it will probably be time for advanced search. So I've decided what I really want to know about is library classification in an academic environment. So in the fields below, I'm going to type in library classification. And I'm going to search, I'm going to truncate the word academic. So I'm going to go academ, put an asterisk, and that's going to bring back words academic, academia, um, academy, Okay, and then because I don't feel like that totally describes the concept I'm looking for, I'm going to use the Boolean operator or to connect that term with hmm, school or college or university. Okay, well, I don't think I have all the synonyms in here, but this is a good start. So now that we have our search terms typed in, we have to tell ProQuest which fields to target with our search. So ProQuest has this really neat option called anywhere except full text. Uh, this means the database is gonna search the areas of the article that are most likely to indicate high relevance, such as the title, abstract, and subject terms. 
if your keyword shows up in one of those places, it's much more likely to be relevant than if it's just in the body of the text. If it's in the title, the abstract, or the subjects, it's likely that an actual human person made a conscious decision to tell us that that word is the major focus of the article. If it only shows up in the body text, then it could just be an insignificant mention of the word and we wouldn't want to waste time reading that article. The other difference with advanced search is that you can refine your results at this stage instead of just after you get the results. So now that we have our search terms filled in and the field selected, I'm going to click the peer reviewed box. I want just scholarly journals just articles and unfortunately I just speak English and I'm going to hit search. Thirty-seven results. That is definitely a number that I could read so that's good. But one more thing about the drop down menus. One of the options yeah, you may have seen before or maybe even searched by before is subject headings or subjects. This one can be a bit more complicated than the other fields if you don't know how it works. When we search the title field, uh, the abstract, we're using uncontrolled vocabularies or keyword searching. And there's an infinite number of keywords you could think of to search that might bring back a result. I could search the word pi. And if pi shows up anywhere in any part of the record, it will return that result to me even if the main focus of the article is not pi. But subjects are different. There's a finite number of subjects, so we actually have to know what word to put in the search box in order to get a relevant result. So that brings us to controlled vocabularies. This is a concept you'll learn about in greater detail from your instructors, so I'm just going to give you a very basic introduction. So a, voc a controlled vocabulary is a list of preferred terms from which the indexer must choose when assigning subject headings or descriptors to an article. So if your job is as an indexer, you read a piece of new research, and then based on a list of terms, you decide which of those terms best describes the article. So these controlled vocabularies can be called different things, such as subjects, subject headings, descriptors, and you're looking to find them in areas of the database called subject index or thesaurus is another popular term for it. But why do we need controlled vocabularies? Well, if I were to ask you what this picture is, some of you would say pop, some of you would say soda, maybe carbonated beverage. So one way if we're looking to search for this concept, we could use the Boolean operator or and just put all the different synonyms we can think of. So we could search pop or soda or carbonated beverage. But what if there are other terms we fail to consider? How do we know if we've captured all the synonyms? In that case, we need an authority to tell us the official word for that concept. And that brings us to the, thes the thesaurus. A thesaurus is an example of a tool used to navigate a controlled vocabulary. A thesaurus is an alphabetical searchable listing of all the subject terms used in a single database. Indexers consult this list and choose subjects that match the article they're indexing. Subject terms are more than just keywords. They are the preferred terms to describe concepts found within articles of a given database. The, the thesaurus also shows relationships between terms, such as synonyms or related terms, and also hierarchical uh, arrangements, arrangements such as broader terms and narrower terms. And if appropriate, you can add these other terms to your search. Kind of opens your mind to things you might not have thought about. So if we go back to our database, the link to the thesaurus is usually found on the advanced search page. So for us, it's right here. So I want to see how this thesaurus treats the term um, library classification. Okay, so I'll click on the result that turns up here. And right off the bat, I see that I was wrong. This database has decided that classification schemes is the preferred term, not library classification. And as you see, it also gives me some ideas of broader and narrower terms. 
and we could add these to our search. So I'm going to click classification schemes. And because I'm interested in classification in an academic environment, I'm also going to choose Library of Congress classification. Now I'm also I'm going to choose the Boolean operator or to connect these two terms, and I'm going to add to my search. One thing to note is that this is what is called um, a field code. So when your field code is in the search box, you do not have to specify where you're searching it from because it already knows to search the main subject. Okay. So as you can see, we now have a combination of keyword and uh, controlled vocabulary searching. And that can be really good. So I, we already have our other aspects refined here. So I'm going to hit search. 14 results. 14 results is definitely a manageable list. They all look very relevant. So I'm very happy with this search. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our video tutorial. You'll notice we spent most of our time in LISA, but the principles are much the same in Library Lit. So if you do have time, open up Library Literature Full Text and explore. Check out the drop down menus to see which fields you can search by, and check out the thesaurus to see how it handles the concept of library classification. If you have any questions about database searching or anything else library related, please email us at fimslib at uwo.ca. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for our next video.